Today, throughout the land, there is a growing demand by some women that society begin to treat them as men. Different from men, but equal to them. Most of this restaurant in Chicago is open to women. But a small part is set aside for men who want to have a quick lunch by themselves. The bars and the restaurants which women have been breaking the barriers in are to us what the lunch counters were to the black movement. That's very serious and important. We don't want to be intimidated by signs that say men's buffet. How about, would you like a sign up there that said blacks only or whites only? It's the same principle, same sir. We are, women are persons, women are people. I have no intentions of taking the sign down or changing the sign. If you can get a court order to take it down, fine. You have no intention of no. changing your policy of no. segregated facilities. Is that correct, sir? If you women are that hard up for a, a glass of beer, I'll be glad to serve you to bar. Women are organizing themselves, planning of oppression, demanding the same rights men have, and even talking of revolution. It's the blossoming of the feminist movement. A woman can be a success in the business world, but it takes an exceptional woman, and she'll be fighting men's prejudices all the way. Women went to work in this country shortly before the turn of the century. Companies found they had no trouble adjusting to the dull, tedious jobs that men didn't want. Today, most women are still at the same tedious jobs, and they earn only half of what men earn. Women can't handle the responsibility that most men assume. Most women, I think, have a problem with concentration. A woman's place is more in the home. Theoretically, August the 26th next could be an awful day for American males. That is the 50th anniversary of women's suffrage and to celebrate it, the women's liberation movement proposes a nationwide strike. It was the first time in my life, and I think for many other women too, that we marched for ourselves. children. I'm not here as someone who needs a daycare center or who understood the need for daycare centers until about three months ago when I was writing about the West 80th Street daycare centers. It was then that I began to realize... I remember when I got so frustrated with an inability to publish anything much about the movement that I actually started to go out and speak. American children suffer from too much mother and too little father. So I went with my speaking partner, Dorothy Pittman Hughes, an African-American woman. And wherever we went, it was just astounding that there would be these huge crowds. We were quite interested in you. Obviously, women's liberation is uh, a big thing with you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, something, you know, that I would certainly mm. like to incorporate. Well, but this is, this is uh, writing an essay and looking into the camera and reading it, right? I've started to speak in public regularly, I and mean, I've just begun that. On the subject of women, I thought I could explain it and make an emotional connection with an audience that perhaps, you know, was rare among speakers on this subject. Women really do have a community of interest because we are relegated to menial and dehumanized positions simply because we are women. The Atlantic City Boardwalk, young women from New York and from as far away as Bancroft, Iowa, all members of the women's liberation movement. And what are they liberating themselves from? Braziers and high heels, female appurtenances that they think mark them as women who accept an ideal of femininity dictated by men. In the beginning there, uh, of the movement in the late 60s and early 70s, it was mostly treated with ridicule, bra burners and so on. But once it started to really change the mainstream of the culture, uh, it became a threat. It sounds like a demand for sameness, and that is abhorrent. To me, American cities compared to those in Europe present a relatively dull scene. But when American women adopted the miniskirt displaying much more woman, it was the biggest advance in urban beautification since Central Park was created in Manhattan. People say to me now, uh, are you not uh, upset sometimes when the press is hostile? 
And I always say to myself, well, hostility is a step forward from the ridicule that we started out with. Gloria Stein was an extremely attractive woman. But most of the women that I see in the women's liberation movement, frankly, couldn't lure me out of a burning building. There is a completely false image of, of feminists as being super serious and anti-sexual and anti-humorous and, you know, it's crazy, but that's the way suffragists came down to me, too, as these boring, uh, sexless creatures. To do that is one way to stop the movement. So perhaps because I was obviously publicly none of those things, you know, I was leading in a, uh, what seemed to me an adventurous sexual life and all, and I, you know, doing all these diverse things, maybe I helped to break a false stereotype.